Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with the 23rd verse of the fourth chapter. Jesus went out, went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria. They brought, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, people possessed by demons or having epilepsy or afflicted with paralysis, and he cured them. And the crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who, who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. Rather, they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches other to do this, others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace. Amen. Well, the stage is set for a big speech. And the setting would need to be comparably dramatic. A mountaintop where the newly recruited disciples and all the stargazers might be able to see and hear. And what's the first word that begins this address to the masses? Blessed. Don't worry. I'm not going to go off the deep end with you this morning on a Greek word study. I just want us to recognize that this familiar formulation of the Beatitudes, that blessed are they, or you, is about something that God is doing and the effect it has on particular people. 
You may also be familiar with a translation of this same text that says, happy are they. And here again, it's important that we acknowledge that this is a condition that results from God's activity. Specifically, God's favor with particular people. To be blessed is a holy and sacred action. And Jesus begins his big speech on the mountaintop with an announcement of such sacred action. Remember the refrain that we've been hearing since John's preparatory announcement. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And when this is the case, Jesus preaches, God brings blessings. Now is where it gets interesting and where we are reminded yet again that things are very different in the kingdom of heaven. God's favor is directed towards people that the world is more likely to dismiss. The meek, the poor, the hungry and thirsty, those who grieve what has been lost, those who are persecuted for what they know is true. This is the good news. The gospel, that Jesus begins his sermon from a mountaintop. For the past six months, this church has had a team diligently taking on the challenge of answering an important question. When we say, as it does on the sign at the base of our driveway, all are welcome. What do we mean? And maybe even further, what are we doing to embody this statement? And just because we say it and we paint it on our signs, do people actually experience a sense of welcome in this place? For many of us, these aren't questions that we've had to wonder about too much. Even before I ever stepped foot in this place, I could have confidently assumed that I would be welcomed here. I'm a straight, white male, married to a woman, and the parent of two children. I have both a bachelor's and master's degree, and I work at a job that I love and feel appropriately compensated for. I speak and read English pretty well for someone whose first language was German. I've been a Lutheran my whole life, just like my parents before me, and my Norwegian and Swedish and German grandparents before them. I own my own home and a couple of cars. I get to spend summer weekends at a cabin up north and have traveled to lots of other parts of the world. I have my share of pretty standard health concerns, but none that have given me a permanent disability. I can walk, ride a bike, and lift heavy objects. (laughs) As long as my prescription is current, and I do get it checked every year, I can read up close, and I can see things in the distance. I have a reliable group of friends in my life, and a family that loves me unconditionally. And aside from one awkward encounter in a Paris metro station, I have never felt unwelcome anywhere I wanted to be. So I had little doubt that this church would be any different. Also, all of these things that I just rattled off, I know them to be blessings in my life. 
These aren't things that I've created or assembled on my own. These are attributes that passed on genetically, inherited, gifted, and granted by God. Often, through those, God has brought into my life. These things are indeed blessings. Even if Jesus didn't say, blessed are the educated, or the happily married, or the solidly middle class, or those who can afford to wear disposable contacts. This good news is still good news. But on this mountaintop, Jesus isn't worried about me knowing that I am blessed, let alone feeling welcome to participate in in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is way more concerned that those who don't normally experience the world as hospitable might also understand that God's blessings are for them too. That how God created them is just as sacred as any other part of creation. The members of our Reconciling in Christ team were energized to take on this work that they already recognized as truth. Now, this congregation will have the chance to ratify this same belief by adopting a statement of welcome that they have so wonderfully drafted. And here's what that statement says about those who have been made to feel anything but blessed for so long. We affirm the sacredness of people, of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. The sacredness of all those who have experienced exclusion because of race, ability, age, religious belief, or culture. The sacredness of those who wrestle with addiction, physical or mental health, imprisonment, socioeconomic circumstances, or anything that too often divides us. Among the many privileges that I have in my life, because of all those blessings that I rattled off earlier, there is one that is decidedly absent. I do not have the privilege of ranking my blessings above yours or anyone else's. And whether you received your blessings in the same way that I received mine, doesn't matter either. God's blessings are uniquely crafted and uniquely delivered. And they find their equality in their capacity to serve the kingdom of heaven, just as God imagined. And lastly, The kingdom of heaven is not better suited when any one of us decides who's in or who's out. Jesus' sermon today makes that quite clear. In fact, the work for those of us who feel inherently blessed is to illuminate and to magnify the blessings of the fullest possible expression of the kingdom of heaven. This will happen when we work to include those who have been excluded or made to feel undeserving of anything but the greatest measure of God's love, grace, and mercy. It's to this audience we join together with Jesus and proclaim from the mountaintop As our new welcome statement concludes, you 
are absolutely invited to join us in this lifelong journey. We welcome all who are seeking God's love and grace. We need each other. And our sincere hope is by being in community together, we will know the kingdom of God in Christ has come near. Thanks be to God. Amen.